Hi, everybody. My name is Eamon, and welcome to today's Hat Month podcast. I have the pleasure of having Stephen from Air Speeder on the call with us today. So, welcome to the call. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you, Eamon. It's a pleasure to be here and speak to you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Well, before the call, I was checking out a little bit more about Air Speeder. It looks something that's super exciting, super cutting edge. Um, can you tell us a little bit more for those who aren't in the know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This normally um, blows people's minds when they see it for the first time, and they they normally kind of think, "Wow, does this exist? Um, is this happening today?" Well, yeah. Um, so yeah, hi, I'm I'm Stephen Sidlow. I'm uh, head of media and marketing for Airspeeder. Um, Airspeeder is the best way of putting this is uh, pod racing in Star Wars. So we build and race flying cars. Uh, we do that out of Australia. Um, we are a new sport coming to market. So think Formula One, but 50 meters off the ground, digital tracks, digital signage, broadcast, um, on all of the above. So yeah, the, one of the reasons you know we we kind of got to this uh, stage was everything starts with competition. Um, whether it is um, whether it's Formula One, whether it's the space race, whether it's the Schneider Trophy seaplane race herald in the Spitfire, everything starts with with competition. And we're at the dawn of a new industry of uh, flying cars, flying taxis and drone delivery systems. So we needed to create a competition that allows uh, all those companies to test their technology and, and then build a build a future for us all. So, yeah, this is um, this is happening right now we've done a number of races already behind closed doors and um yeah we're looking to put people in it this year and and yeah create a new motorsport out of flying cars so yeah that's us fantastic fantastic i mean it's interesting when you're saying that you know all these previous races you know using spitfires and everything that's kind of cutting edge i mean when you're launching essentially kind of like a new sport in a new area what are the kind of challenges that you're having with let's say Gaining new customers in a in a sport that really doesn't exist yet in that segment. Oh, it's a huge challenge. You know, I mean, whether you're a you know a, a small pet shop or you're you're you know a new sport coming to market, you know, we all have to understand and find out who our audience and customers are, um, and we're going through that now. You know, we're not a, we don't have a legacy, so we're not a you know we're not American football, we're not soccer, we don't have. Um, the audience of Formula One just yet, and so we have to understand, you know, who our customer is, who are who's going to watch flying car racing. We've got an idea, you know, people who might like Star Wars and, and existing Formula E sport, uh, you know, racing, but um, we don't know yet. So we have to. Our challenge is understanding. Uh, our custom profile, understanding what their habits are online, how they convert, you know, how, what's going to turn them into ambassadors to our brand. Um, it's a hard road, you know, we're building building trust in a new form of transportation, which is our speeders, our, our, which are created by our sister company, Alauda. Um, and we have to build up that that trust that this is a, you know, the, these are going to be the, the vehicles of the future. And then we have to build up their um excitement levels for our, our sport so yeah the challenge i would say is 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 you know building a new sport at the same time we're building a new form of transportation and getting uh get you know getting people on board with that and uh and that means that we, we we're just looking at data all the time understanding you know where they are the demographics um and yeah that, that's it's that's the, the main challenge Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it's good to, to know that. I mean, one of the biggest challenges is to know your talents, and then you can, you know, work on that from there. So, yeah. I mean, what are you doing at the moment? I mean, how, like when you're saying you're trying to find out who your ideal customer is, uh, you know, when you're building something new, creating the profiles, I mean, how are you gaining customers at the moment, or how are you bringing people to find out about what it is you're doing? Yeah, so... um you know, we follow a well-trodden path in 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 sports, um, uh, especially in Formula One. So, what you'll have is different teams uh, coming into a sport and then building their vehicle to win a race. Now, with the, each of those teams, they'll they'll market out to uh, to grow their own uh, grow their own audience, their own team fandom. Um, so, there's a there's a route into the sport that way, and we can we can dine off off of that data and, and understanding. Um, but the one of the main areas is to kind of split out what we're 
trying to achieve across the business. So um, the science and technology about building flying cars or eVTOL vehicles, we know there's a huge audience there. So getting under the fingernails of, of, of this science and technology and hydrogen and electric powertrains, all of that can be really interesting for both TV and on digital. And by creating content specifically for them, um, we learn what works and what doesn't work. Now we do that again with motorsport and the jeopardy around our pilots and how they how they win races. And then on from that, you know, we've also got the gaming element, which is you know how these pilots train and the esports side of things. So by constantly testing with content, video content, uh, learning from the data, uh, adapting it, um, and retargeting uh, those that work, um, and marketing what does work. Uh, we we get to a point where we understand um, you know what engages our our customers and and, and build up our CRM and uh, and yeah and, and hopefully we we get um uh, you know we get a lot of ambassadors that we can bring to one of our flying car races in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Well, tell me in. <laughs> it definitely tell me. <laughs> when you're talking about let's say engaging and building up your CRM, I mean, how important a role does your website play in you know gathering new customers? Oh, it's 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 huge. It's huge right now. Um, so I think for 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 us, which is a you know a new a new form of transportation and a new sport coming to market, um, it's imperative that we you know the website acts as a as one of the first points of the funnel uh, in regards to build up our CRM. Um, and that's not just for us; it's also for our partners like uh, IWC and. Uh, you know, Intel and, and and DHL, you know, creating gateways into um, signing up for newsletters or giveaways and things like that. It's it's it's, it's imperative that the web uh, enables us to do that. We um, uh, uh, we get a lot of return of investment by by pushing people to sign up and it kind of get gives them a unique look inside our business and uh from from that perspective so we give them unique unique uh experiences um and so yeah it's 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 imperative okay and what what would you say are you know some things that let's say are working really well for you now regarding being worried out inquiring new clients and stuff or maybe one or two things that need to be improved upon yeah, I would say what 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 does work is um, uh, you know our our announcements. So you know, I guess we're in that really good phase where every week we're announcing a, a you know a new technology or a new partner or a new location that we might race in. So our kind of core um, database are, are fed quite a lot of uh, exciting news and and. Uh, 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 from that perspective um i think a challenge would be for us at this stage how do we reward our core audience from that perspective so we've got some ideas in regards to you know experiences with our partners like iwc the uh, luxury watch manufacturer you know working with them more closely to to invite some of our our core um, CRM uh, database to private events, you know, getting better at, at, at fostering and nurturing our our our, our, client, our, our customers, our, our, our fans. Really, I think we need to do a much better job. And I I I, I always I always feel feel that you needs to be balanced. So you we have to balance uh, finding new, uh, but also looking after the existing. And I think we can always do better at looking after our existing audience. Um, and we can do that through experiential giveaways or, um, you know, unique content, uh, things like that. And I think we can always do better um, and uh, we should do better. Very good. Very good. Well, look, when everybody thinks they're perfect, there's no room for improvement. And if you think you're perfect, you're not perfect. <laughs> so it's good that you exactly. acknowledge that and that you want to improve. And, you know, some of the biggest and most successful companies out there you know, are known for customer success. So if you can build a brand on that, you're definitely building the right thing. So uh, kind of switching gears a little bit now, I mean, let's talk about you as, let's say, a leader or a leader in marketing. I mean, what keeps you busy on a day-to-day -day basis? 
Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's never a slow day when you're building a new form of transportation and a new sport in the same day. <laughs> so uh, it's a, quite a busy, busy schedule. Um, so the the production team uh, are based in Australia and I work in London. So uh, we've got a, a bit of a time delay in regards to um, prepping and pre-production of, of video content for social media and for TV. Um, we've got a number of different sort of TV deals to educate audiences on our new sport. Um, so a lot of my day is either spent uh, ideating or strategizing which broadcasters, which, what types of content and um, and the release of content as well on social media. So I work with the team to do that um, uh, across the world. Um, from that, for, from, uh, there's also a number of events that we have throughout the year that we need to plan for um, activations on the ground um, then there's the tests that we that we run the flight tests that we need to film for um, and then on top of that we have uh, technical so how do we film these races from the sky um, and that means working with drone companies that means uh, building uh, and ideating what the the tracks will look like in Unreal Engine it's 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 everything uh, and the above so a quite a varied day of um, media marketing and um and ideation about what this sport will look like in the future mm -hmm. no it's, a, it's exciting like you're you're literally breaking new ground <laughs> you're breaking new air as it were uh so <laughs> you know breaking into new things so like rapid fire uh this is one of my favorite bits uh so if you're ready for some maybe uh rapid fire questions it's very simple so um like for example like what was the the last book you read Oh wow! Um, yeah, last book I read, uh, not the most highbrow, but um, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger's autobiography, Total Recall. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I must actually check that one out myself because I, I find him a fascinating character. So, um, <laughs> also when it comes to, um, for example, imagine you know everybody who's uh, watching or listening to this podcast, they forget everything that we just talked about, everything about, you know, air speedster. Why is one thing that you'd like to let them, you know, really have them know about the company? To wrap up? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think, uh, you know, it's, it, we can talk about how, you know, this is a, uh, could be a, you know, rich man's folly that this is a, uh, you know, a new sport of flying cars and it will um, it will die out eventually. Uh, but um, I think for people to take away that this industry that we're in is is worth one point five trillion in the next five years. Uh, that was Morgan Stanley. So air taxis, drone delivery systems, um, new forms of airborne transportation in uh, personal craft flying cars, there will be a shift change um, and it will be quicker than was moving towards a autonomous car uh, future. So it would be before that. And I think something like Airspeeder as the catalyst to that uh, entire industry uh, means that we'll get there a lot sooner. So I think the one takeaway I would I would kind of give is, is the response to the many tweets that I see on a daily basis, where's my flying car? It's 2023. <laughs> well, it's coming and that's what we're trying to do. Fantastic, fantastic. So I think we'll we'll leave on that note. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. I look forward to hearing and definitely as a uh, future fan of the brand, I think this is very exciting, very exciting, definitely going forward. So thank you very much for your time. And that is it for today's podcast. All the best. Thanks, Bye. Bye.